Okay, we're going to start with the nation. Army explains accidental drone attack on villagers. Uzodima, Supreme Court slams 40 million naira cost on Ozekome. Hmm. Budget 2024, federal government targets concessionary loans and climate financing. Jackpot syndrome, Nigerians kills wife in UK over bills. CBM blames cash crunch on uneven flow. Uh, we are repositioning police, says Minister Iman Suleiman Ibrahim. Education gets 20.08% of Mackin Day's 433 billion naira budget. And Shanghu's coronation kicks off with 150 million naira empowerment scheme. Okay, which story are we starting with? Uh, the major headline was really, really painful mm -hmm. uh, yesterday. We took that story um, yesterday. The um, um, chief of army staff was in Kaduna. He said mm -hmm. that he reminded us again that the routine airstrike by the army int intended to attack terrorists hit some civilians during a religious celebration of, at the Tundumbiri village, Afaka Ward in Kaduna State. Uh, President Bola Timu has also ordered a, a thorough probe um, to prevent a recurrence as Kaduna State Governor Ubasani also did the same thing on Tuesday. The President also sympathized with the victims. Um, Nema, that is the National Emergency Management Agency, said 85 persons were killed, although today other people are saying more numbers have come out. Mm. About 60 plus were actually rushed to the hospital. Um, Northern State Governors Forum demanded a comprehensive investigation describing the, ter the error as heartbreaking tragedy. Yes. And more importantly, the uh, Chief of Army Staff, Le Lieutenant uh, Tarid Lagbaja, said he tendered an unreserved apology hmm. to the community and says it was an error. He expressed regret over the error, describing it as very disheartening occurrence. And he, he gave the, some of the victims about, I think, 10 million naira he gave. And, um, Hoping more, more, more organizations are coming forward to see what they can do to support the community. It's really, it's really painful, Very painful. Story and it's really heart wrenching. That is, the word is heart wrenching. Yes. yes. So, the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister for the Economy, Mr. Wale Edun, yesterday said the country needs to take advantage of cheap concessionary loans and climate financing to raise revenue to fund the 2024 budget. Uh, he made this revelation in a speech during a one day retreat on the 2024 appropriation bill organized by the Senate Committee on Appropriation. And the theme of the retreat was budget and budgetary process improved outcomes in 2024. According to him, he said that Nigeria's fiscal space was exhausted in line with the position of the International Monetary Fund, IMF, and proposed a strategic shift towards concessionary funding, including climate financing and a viable option. And he says that the space is exhausted. We have to now focus on concessional funding uh, cheaper funding, even free funding and climate financing uh, is on the way. And he says the 2024 proposed budget states clearly that there is room for privatization, maximizing our own assets without borrowing. I was really interested in the fact that they are going to be working right now to see how we can limit borrowing funds so that we don't have a lot of debt servicing, which eats into our budget. And he promises that there are now a lot of countries and organizations are willing to invest in our economy more than ever before. So we look at how we can harness those and leave the borrowing we are used to. Okay, another story, uh, Nisha? Yes, I do. I have uh, <laughs> um, this um, human interest story uh, about the Nigerian couple that had traveled abroad or the word jackpot abroad. Um, so they're Nigerians from Ekiti State. And um, the way the story goes is that, you know, this couple had their issues even long before they left Nigeria. You know, they seemed to be domestic violence within the marriage, distrust. And by the time they traveled abroad, it seemed to have gotten worse <coughs> to the point that the wife had called the police, reported her husband trying to get a restraining order. And the next day, the police came just as a visit. This is something that they do as part of the request that she had made. And when they opened the door, they found her dead in the mm. house and looked around and the husband was in, on the premises. He was arrested on suspicion of murder. And the story unfolds, he'll be taken through the courts. Uh, it just seems that they had serious issues. They have three children. It had to do with also the economic situation there as well, trying to find out, you know, trying to sort themselves out. Mm, One person not just... feeling empowered, you know, different yeah, circumstances sure. there. So those compiled and imploded on them. Really sad story. But many then it's... More of these kind of shows, because many families are yeah. struggling mm. to settle so in just... the community. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's take another so story. So let me take the Zekome <coughs> Supreme Court. So um, the Supreme Court yesterday slammed um, Chief 
Ozekome. Mike Ozekome with a 40 million naira fine for filing an application to the appeal court, uh, to the Supreme Court, sorry, after the Supreme Court had declared uh, Opus Zodima governor and removed Ihedio, Amika Ihedio of the PDP in Imo State. After that matter had been settled, he went to the court asking the court to determine what the court considered the pre election issue, asking them that they did not rule on the validity of Uzodima's candidacy since it was not challenged by Ihedio Hab, but you know, he was now bringing that application, asking them to rule on it. And he had some cases he said he was backing or not, but the court, <coughs> in their own was the justices, Justice Ian Gokoro quizzed Ozekome on whether the Apex Court had jurisdiction to entertain the application being an election-related matter. And he said, in the atmosphere that we are in now, we will not entertain speculative matters, and you must come to this court with a genuine matter. Council knows the truth before any matter is brought to court. Recently, people have been bringing in impossible mm. matters to the judiciary. Then they go to social media to denigrate the court. And you know, we do not have jurisdiction over that matter. Mm. The Kome has been asked to personally pay that amount of money. There's also a provision under our laws to cancel clients. But Nigerians don't like that part. When you tell a client, this matter might not fly. It's not, you say this one is not serious lawyer. Mm. Let me go and find you don't know your work. that lawyer. So whatever they bring, fight, fight though. <laughs> so when finds, right. How about for your name and integrity? Shouldn't she just refuse to take? I don't understand. You know, I, no, I, I you, have them, you, you have bragging rights. You want to say like I'm the one that was able to, you know. Bring if you believe that you this would, is, is unnecessary, you should not. Yes, yes you, you see the cases. Not. You know when you go you to court. All right, the punch. Just want to miss the money. Death toll hits 120. Villagers alleged military bombed twice. Right. Truck crushes woman mm -hmm. amid Lagos police Okada riders clash. Cabal running Akiridolu's government, stealing funds, says PDP. Over 9,000 civil servants fail mm. promotion exam. Auction, presidential aircraft bidders get till December 24th. FG seeks 35 billion naira to revive a Jokuta steel. And power, finance ministries get 618 billion naira loan, says and, uh, CSO's kick, that's civil society kicks. Which story? So the PDP in um, on those states are now going to force us to invoke the provisions of the constitution. They are insisting that the cabals are now running the state and of course they are cutting away money. According to Mr. Um, spokesperson for the PDP, he is saying that the deputy governor should take over office. He's lamenting the prolonged absence of the governor and he said that we are deeply concerned about the ruinous costs of health, the challenge of the governor has bestowed upon the state. The most obvious of it is the emergence of a cabal ladly informer that has seized every initiative mindlessly driving our state into penury. Of course, when there's a vacuum, somebody go yeah. yeah. And the provisions of the constitution, if invoked, would have just kept the integrity of the APC as a party. That party, the chairman, everybody in the, uh, within the APC, whether in the federal or on those states, should invoke this uh, provisions of the constitution and let the deputy take <coughs> over so that we have at least a substantive case. If truly funds are being uh, preferred in that state, how would we find out? Do, does Akari Dolu want to finish his eight years and face EFCC in his health condition? Mm. I think mm. this is a question that needs to be answered. Be we should just do the All right, thing. let's go on a quick break now. When we come back, we we'll continue with our review. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. 